Hello, my name is Kurt Schwer, and this is video 7 for Research Tools 2011. This video will be on Python slash IPython, and this is the first part, and it'll be an introduction to working with Python from the terminal. Here I am inside of Ubuntu, and I will start up not Python, but IPython, the extended shell. So here I am inside of IPython. If this is the first time running, it's going to ask you about setup and you're going to press enter. And let's jump right into Python. Unlike Bash, Python is a lot more uniform and hopefully it'll be a lot easier for you to pick up and write scripts with. So let's start off with working with some strings. In Python, this is a string. We put them inside of single quotes or double quotes or use the double quote character. I'm going to stick with single quotes just for consistency. The pound character is a comment, so you'll see me sometimes type in comments that way. And there's a lot of functionality right in the, the get-go. We can say Nancy is a string plus a space in a string plus Foster is a NOAA ship, and we get back the string Nancy Foster. So you can take strings and concatenate them together with the plus. We can also um, set them to a variable, so ship name equals Nancy Foster, and then we can print out Nancy Foster. Ship name. There it is, saved as that. We can ask Python what type it thinks any variable is, so ship name, press enter, and it returns str, meaning string. So that's the very basics of strings, one of our many data types that come for free with Python. And basically, strings are a sequence of characters. So let's say ship name equals coastal surveyor. So now we have a string. We can ask the length of sh ship name, and I'm going to type SHIP, press tab for name completion, since I'm in IPython, not regular Python. And it will tell us how many characters are in that string. We can ask for a particular location in a string. So we can ask for, if I get the right variable name, ship name. The first one is C for in Coastal Surveyor. And we can ask what the eighth character is. It happens to be the capital S. We can also ask where in a string a particular substring or character exists. So find s. It's going to tell us that it's uh, where the s is located, and that's at the eighth position. And we could also say find the letter x, which does not occur in the string. And here it returns a minus one when it can't find anything. We can also ask it where STAL is located in there, and it will tell us where that actual little chunk of string characters go. And we can start pulling apart the string. So if we know that the capital S starts at the eighth position, we could say ship name and use the square brackets to address sections of a string and pull it apart. So we can say eight colon nine, and it should return two characters, or eight, excuse me, eight colon 10 and it will return two characters. It doesn't return what's at the last position. It returns up to one before that. But we can also just leave that out, and it will return to the end. Or we could do the other way around, where there's nothing, and it goes to the eighth spot. And so there it's going to return coastal. We can also address with negative signs, and that will show us from the end of the string, from the right. So let's just type ship name so you can see it again. And if we go ship name, square bracket and minus four colon so the fourth back to the end and it gives us the last four characters in the string. Okay let's take a quick look at numbers. It's nice to be able to take some numbers and do things with them. We can say the number one is an integer and so we can ask it and make sure so we can say type of one and it returns as an integer. We also have uh, real numbers so we can say 1.1 and we can ask it the type of 1.1, which is actually a floating point or float. 
and we can ask it to take a number and turn, return a string for us. So there it's put in single quotes and we now have a string. We can also take a string and ask it to turn it into a number for us, so 3.1415. Return that back, we'll return back an actual number rather than a string. We can do simple addition. We can multiply. You can divide. But the answers aren't always going to be what you expect with division. With a divide, you actually are going to probably want to do a floating point divide if you actually want to get fractions of things back. Otherwise, it's going to give you the rounded down value. You can also ask for the remainder. So 3 divided by 2. The remainder is 1. That percent is often referred to as the mod operator, M-O-D. That would be mod equals that character. Now, let's go ahead and run this command, import math. Wait a second, what's that? That actually is bringing in a module of utilities that we can use. And uh, modules are places that people put together a whole set of tools that, that kind of function uh, as a group together to help you out. And we can use, in this case, a bunch of math functions that aren't normally available, but you can bring them in by saying import math. And inside of there, we can say math.py. And when the number pi is already defined for us with some pretty good precision, we can take the sine of something. So sine of math.py divided by, divided by 2. And there you get 1.0. Math.radians. We could convert degrees to radians. So if we say 360, it's going to give us back 2 pi. And we can say math.degrees. And then 2 times math.pi pi and it gives us 360. Now with a module who knows what's in there we could go google it but that wouldn't be any fun. It's actually possible from the IPython shell to type math dot and then press tab for completion and it will go out and try to find us everything that is in the math module. For now please ignore anything with the underscores so all these guys in the beginning just ignore those uh, the anything in here and just let it be. Okay. So let's take a look at something called lists. And we can type range for and the range command is going to give us a list of items counting from 0 up to 1 less than the number we give it. So it gives us four items. We can say range of say 3 to 7 and it's going to give us starting at the number 3 up to but not including 7. So here it's going to give us 3, 4, 5, 6. And uh, we can also say range 3 comma 28 and in there we can skip by 5 and so it's only going to give us every fifth one and so there we get 3, 8, 13, 18, and 23. Now we can make our own lists we can say ships equals, and we can say tug a string, rowboat, another string. They now with a list, they don't have to be the same uh, type of things. So we can have a list that contains numbers and strings and other types of objects. So here I'm making uh, just a list of a couple ships, uh, ship identifiers. And we can say type ships and ask Python what type it thinks this is. And it returns a list, not too surprising. Now we can also append things onto a list. So we can say ships.append. And then we can pass it whatever we feel like. So here we're going to add another interesting ship. This happens to be a University of New Hampshire ship. And now if we type ships, there'll be something else in there. We can say length ships now. And we create one starting off with four items up here, and we now have five items down in this area. So length five. Now we can also look into that list, and we can say grab the, what's it, position zero. So we count from zero here, so tug. And we can say ships minus one, and that'll give us our last item. Ships minus two will be the second to the last item, etc.
Now we can also say ships remove and we can get rid of any one of those items. So let's get rid of the rowboat because rowboats aren't very useful. And now if we type ships, there's no more rowboat. Now if we want this to actually be sorted, we can just say ships.sort and call this method. Now append and sort are what are called methods. They're kind of like functions that go on an object. They, they, they're attached to it and they only work with that particular object. So now if we type ships, it's actually going to be sorted and numbers come before letters. So we'll have now our sorted list of ships with their ID numbers and then the tug at the end. Now again, you can type ships, press tab, and this object has a bunch of things. Ignore all of the things with underscores and just look at this last column with append, account, extend, index, insert. Uh, a number of interesting things. We can say ships.reverse and take a look at ships again. And now the ships is the other way around from the sorted list. So let's have some fun with our ship name. Let's create a new ship name and look at what we can do with some string operations. Uh, so let's say Gulf Challenger comma research vessel, which we often write as R slash V. And so now that we have a ship name, we can actually start working with that. And we can say ship name dot split. And the split operation breaks things up into to chunks and generates a list based on something that it's trying to split from the string. The default behavior is to split on any white space, so it's going to split here on this space and then here on the space between the comma and the RV. But we can also ask it to split on anything that we want. So we can split on the comma and then it will split at Gulf Challenger and then the next one will be RV and that space that was in there will go with the RV. So now we can actually save this in a variable. So we can say fields equals ship name dot split. And we can then split on the comma. And we can say fields. What's in fields? So we have Gulf Challenger and RV. Now the name of our ship is in the first part. So we can say name equals fields sub zero, since we're starting to count from zero. So if we type name, we now have Gulf Challenger. And there's funny things you can do with strings. We can repeat strings multiple times. So we can say name times name times four, and we'll have Gulf Challenger stuck together a whole bunch of times. That's probably not what we wanted. But we can also join things together with any string that we want. So we can do a join of maybe two dashes, join. And then we pass it the list of things that we want to join together. So we can say fields. And so rather than being separated by a comma, we'll see them cut separated by a space, two dashes and a space. So there they are, Gulf Challenger, and there is joined together by, by that. To give you another example, we can say fields.append, stick on a something else. And so if we say fields, there's our fields list, and we can then join the fields, and look, now we have dashes in between each of those. So it's nice to be able to build up a list that way. Let's take a quick look at working with some files. I'm going to open up Emacs here and I'm going to create a file. And I'm going to make this window a little smaller for you so you can see what I'm doing in my little window. Okay, so Control X, Control F to open a file. And we're going to say, we're going to call that data.csv for comma separated value. And let me type in some numbers, one, one comma two, four comma five, and nine comma minus one. Let's save that with control X, control S for save. Now it's saved. And let's go back to our terminal. We can do a PWD and see that we're in research tools. We can do an LS and we can see that we actually have in our directory now a data.csv. So we can do a less data.csv and there's our data. We'll do that again, that was too fast. So there's our data. And we can now go ahead and try to work with that file. Files are fairly easy in Python. We can say data file, which is gonna be our variable that will be a file. Open data.csv, press enter. And now if we say type data file and press enter, we have something of type file. 
so data file dot and then tab will tell us what we can do with the file and there's a fair, fairly large set of things that you can do with the file the one we're going to start off with first is read line right there so let's do data file dot read line and press enter and that's type the right thing read line there we go so it returns us the very first line but this weird character at the end here, slash n, is a new line that came with it. So if we want to get rid of that, there's a command called strip you can call on any string. And that strips off any white space that goes with something. But I just did something weird. I chained together this first thing that I did, which returned what came out of that. Except for it's going to grab us the next line. And then I passed it to strip, which then stripped the white space off of it. So I've grouped things together and built up something that's kind of surprising. Now let's read some more lines. So there's the third line and if we do it again we're past the end of our data. What do we get back? We get a blank line and again we keep getting blank lines forever after. Let's go ahead and delete that variable because we don't want to use it anymore. So data file and that is no more. So to delete is a nice function to just get something out of your workspace. So let's reopen data file data file equals open data.csv okay that's opened now there was another function up there so if we do data file tab and there's something called read lines read lines can actually pull the whole file in at once so we'll say read lines plural and we'll say data We'll say lines equals uh, read lines and let's see what we've got here type lines and I just did something funny that I happen to do just by habit if you leave out the parentheses in IPython it will put them in for you and try to create a command that actually works for Python so here it added the parentheses for us and ran the right command so what I really should have typed was this line right here with the parentheses and it returned to us that we have a list so we can say length list and hopefully this is three oops length lines there you get to see some of my errors and we have three lines of data now we can take a look at li our lines so we can say lines the first line and that looks just like that we expected to have that new line on there again so again we can do lines and then we can strip that remove that space off the end and then we can go back to use that split split and we're going to split on the comma we should get back the numbers one and two in a list okay so let's take that and we can then say um, our fields equals that and fields now contains our little list and we can say field 0 and fields 1. Now let's take a quick look at doing a for loop before we go any farther. So we're going to build up uh, a for loop and you can say for and then you say your variable so number in and we can use that range command so let's just do range 4 and so it's going to return us a list of four things here and then we can iterate across those or loop through and each time the output of range the next number will go into number. Now if we hit enter these dots on the left are telling us it's ready to take more input and to create blocks in Python it actually uses indentation so we're going to actually be very careful about our spaces and we'll go into that more in the next video but do pay attention to where I do spaces in terms of indenting. So we'll say print number, press enter. Now it's waiting to end the block, and the way you end the block is just press enter again, and the blank line will tell it that it's done. And it's going to print 0, 1, 2, 3. So if we remember, range 4 returned those four numbers. So let's try something a little more fancy. We'll do for item in. So this variable can be whatever you want, so I'm just going to call it item. And I'm going to say 1. 2, 5, 4, whatever. We'll do 5, comma, 4, comma, hello. And 
colon says it's the end of the for loop. We press enter and we're indented, it's helping us out. And then we can say print item. So there we've got our list coming out in the order it's up there and it can be whatever any kind of object in this list. So let's do something with our data. We can actually open up our file and loop over all the lines. So we can say for line in open data.csv. That's opening up our file. It's going to return one line at a time as it goes through it. And let's just print the line and we'll hit enter. And we get those new lines in there. So print wants to give us a new line and the string contains a new line. So we end up with a double blank line in there. So let's change that. I just hit the up arrow and we'll say line dot strip. And there it looks like the data coming out of our file. So let's go ahead and write ourselves a little bit of code that can create a list of all the data and load it up so that we could maybe do something with it like plotting. We'll say data equals, and what I'm creating here is an empty list. So this empty list, we can every time we go through the for loop with a new line, we can add our data to that list. So let's go ahead and give it a try. We can say for line in open data.csv. And then what we can do is we can say uh, data.append line.strip. Press enter twice. And now let's see what we've got in data. So in data now contains the string for each line in our file. This is very much like what we got with read lines. Not quite what we want yet. So let's reset our data variable to a blank list again. And let's say for line in open data.csv. Now that we've got that, we'll go ahead and see if we can split this apart and do something a little more useful for it so we actually have numbers in our list. We can say fields equals line dot split and we'll split on the comma since we have commas in each of our lines there. And now we have this in fields. We have our, our first field is our x and our second field is our y. So let's save those variables x equals and you can actually ask it to try and make you a number out of a string. So we'll say this is an integer fields sub zero. So this is the first field. And we can say y equals int fields sub one. So now we have our x and y. We'd like to append that into our overall list. So append x comma y. So we're appending a, an item that is a list itself. Press enter, enter again, and then one more time. And now let's say print data and see what we got. So now we actually have a list containing lists inside. So there's a little list here, another list here for each of our lines. And so we can say data, data sub zero, we'll get back that first point, data sub one, the second point, data sub two, our third point, or minus one is also the last one. So that's great. We can load up data that way and we can manipulate it once we have it in. But let's load data another way. And you may have seen this if you've gone through the lectures. We can import a module called NumPy. This is a very fancy array processing tool that's very fast and very well designed for doing scientific data processing. So we can say NumPy. If we type NumPy a dot and then tab, we're going to get overloaded with options. And there's a ton of stuff in here. But we actually, I'm going to tell you the one we want because we would get overloaded in trying to find it. So load txt is our function to load text. And in IPython, we can put a question mark after a object or thing of any kind. And we can try to ask for help on it. So I'm going to put that in there and press enter. And here I'm going to get the help for the load text function. And here it tells me it's a function and a bunch of stuff that you shouldn't care about. But here is all the options that we can pass to it. So we need to pass it a f name, which means file name. Uh, data type, we're going to say this is integers. And delimiter, we have a comma delimited file. 
and we uh, don't need to do anything else. So I'll leave it to you to come back and read that whole documentation if you want to know more. So let's give it a try, numpy.loadtxt, and we're going to give it our file name, so data.csv. Pardon the tabs there as I try to complete things. And then we're going to give it dtype equals int and delimiter equals semicolon, and we'll just say data equals. So let's take a look at what our data actually is. We'll say type data, and we get back as a numpy nd array. Don't worry too much about what that means. We'll get to know it more throughout the, uh, the series. But for now, just know that it is a list of data points. And so if we type data, there we can see we have an array, which is a little different than a list, but it works pretty much the same. These things are fairly interchangeable. If we can try to ask for a list of our data, and you'll get back that it'll take each of these pieces apart, and you'll get an overall list, and inside will be a bunch of little arrays. So we can say data sub zero, and that looks very much like this first little item. So an array is an array of arrays. You'll get used to this over time. And we now have our data loaded in, which is very nice. And we'll be able to do that with all sorts of text files. And later on, we'll learn how to read binary data from highly packed uh, stuff coming out of various instruments. Now let's go ahead and take a quick peek at one of the key slash fundamental ways to break apart and remember things inside of Python. So if you had to type every single command you wanted to run every time, you'd go a little crazy. So we want a way to be able to batch up and put together a series of instructions that you'd like to have as a thing that you're going to keep calling again and again to do the same task. And that's called a function. So let's create a little function. We do that with the keyword def for define. And we're going to create a function that adds one to a number. Now, you can break things apart in Python with the underscore in function names. You can't use the dash, but you can use an underscore. So we're going to give it a number. And this is the argument in there. So number is what we're passing in. And just like the for loop, we break it with uh, the end of the line with a colon. And we have to indent to start our function. And we can say new number equals number plus one. So we're adding one onto that number and we're saving it. And then when you're done, you return it back as the answer. And press enter twice here. And now we have a function. We can say type add one. And it says it's a function. Now let's give it a call. We can uh, try it out. So we can say add one. And we can then say 9, and we get back 10. So that's the basics of Python at a really beginning level. Hopefully that gives you a sense of some of the little pieces that we'll be using, and we're going to be quickly adding on to this and doing some fun plotting and graphing and digging into data types. And I hope you enjoy this. Thank you very much for listening.